everyone. I'm Madhuri Mavin Kurve, faculty from Thakur College of Engineering and uh, research scholar at IITB for Education Technology. I'm working under guidance of Professor Sana Murthy. So here I'm presenting my journey from ET practitioner to ET researcher, towards ET researcher rather. So as a ET practitioner, I'm also a teacher for last more than 20 years experience. I also face same problem with the students like students are not engaged or they are not motivated or sometimes they are not able to translate the work or translate the concepts. I tried some methodologies but I was having doubt whether my methods are really working or is there any scientific or research systematic research method which can test my idea and prove my idea. So when I entered this ET research. I have studied the sound systematic and evidence based method to test my idea and here I am presenting my research study which is a step towards ET researcher. So now what is the problem I am trying to identify or address? Students engineering design skills are poor. Now what I mean by engineering design skill is students should able, able to design open problems basically. For example, if battery specification is given and they are supposed to design a battery indicator, it is not possible for them to identify which circuit to define. There may be many solutions. So, students are not able to decide such solutions. So, these skills are poor with engineering students. Now, why this problem is important? This problem is important because this is the expected outcome of engineering education. It is defined by a bit. And always educationists as well as employers complain that students lack design competency. So why this lacking of design competencies? It is mainly because teaching engineering design is a challenging job. Why it is challenging job? From teacher's perspective, if you want to teach a design, you need to conduct that courses properly. You require lot of time to devise the material, lot of time to conduct the classes, lot of time to assess the classes. So your time span increases, faculty gets overloaded. Then within a university curriculum, you cannot change the content, you have to stick to the boundary of syllabus. Regarding resources, if we consider you need a separate infrastructure for that, some specialized laboratories for that, so that is another constraint. And if you consider student, why they do not develop? Because you teach a content, but they cannot automatically convert this content into the skills. So we need to train them specifically for this skills. So the next is what I want. I want as a teacher that my students should develop engineering design competencies. Now what are the constraint given? I cannot change syllabus. There cannot be separate training given to the teachers, there cannot be extra workload to the teacher and we do not want any separate infrastructure. So what is my idea and what solution I am proposing? This is my idea. I will create ICT based digital learning material which will include visualizations like simulation and animation. It can assist student for self-study and it can even supplement the existing course. So with this idea, now I am moving ahead. Now in this case, what teacher will do? Teacher will teach the content in the classroom, stick to the syllabus and assign student with this self-learning material. And afterwards, teacher will assess students design skill through open-ended problems. What students will do? The material which is assigned to them, they will self-learn this material and they will solve open-ended problem given to them based on the content whatever is taught, taught in the classroom. Now is my idea novel? Why my idea is novel? First of all, this instructional material is self-learning which is addressing the basic practical constraints. I am trying to incorporate some assessment skill or assessment strategy in the material itself so that student will know that whether I have developed the skill. And third most important point is 
there are visualization available to teach concept, but nobody tried design. So, that is why I can claim that my idea is novel. Now, how do I position my idea? Positioning is already discussed in the previous session. Now, how I position my idea? First is the literature review. For that, I just search for the prior work. What prior work is done? Definitely on the visualization, what prior work is done? And it is found out that there are lot of domain based concepts are taught, conceptual knowledge is given through visualization. In some cases, there is a possibility to develop laboratory skills also, but there are almost nil visualizations which can develop scientific skills like design. So, this is how I have established my work with respect to prior work. Now, next part of the literature is what is the theoretical support required for such things. Now, theoretical support is main component in my design is self learning. So, in order to promote self learning what is required. So, when theory is scan or theory is search it is found that such type of self learning is possible through inquiry based learning. Inquiry based learning, learning means students will have queries and that will be answered by the material. That is one thing and secondly scaffold inquiry. Scaffold inquiry means you are providing support in between so that they will not stuck up, they will go ahead. So, these are the two theories on which my material is based. Now, how did I implement my idea using systematic procedure? So, this is the general review. I identified design skills, measured sub competencies or converted into sub competencies, activities generated and then tested with the student. This is the general outline. Now, I will go one by one how I have done this. So, how I have developed my material using sound and systematic process. What is my major objective? Develop learning material. What will I teach using this material? Design skills. So, the first part is a design skill. So, now what are these skills? and how should I identify them. So, the first part was identification of a design skill itself. For that what I have done is I surveyed literature, I analyze expert design solution also and with together I came, came up with design skill. So, I identified design skill first in my work. Then what I exactly want my students to do with this design skill because design skill is a broad concept. So, how am I going to measure it? So, I need to define learning outcome of this design skills. So, I identified small measurable units that is known as a sub competencies. So, these are the design skills known as uh, design skills which you can see structure open ended problem, gather information, think convergent, divergent this type of design skill I identified. And then I converted, I have shown one example there I converted or I have identified small measurable units for structure open ended problem. And there are four measurable units which I named as a sub competencies. Then I got this sub competencies. Now, my instructional material should teach these sub competencies. That is, this should address these sub competencies. And now they are learning objective of my instructional material. Is it sufficient? I have identified learning objectives and I can develop a material because I am expert in the content. But is it sufficient? Definitely not because the process is still incomplete to prove that my process is sound. So, what I did next? The next is what should be there in the instructional material? There should be some theoretical base. What is my goal? My goal is promote self learning. Now, to promote self learning as I already mentioned I have referred to some learning theories which support self learning. Few of them are mentioned here like scaffolding technique, then self paced learning, then immediate feedback to the learner, you show multiple representations. So, these are all learning theories which support self learning. Then my technology tool is visualization. So, when I talk about a visualization I refer to the literature related to visualization where multimedia principles are given which say that where to be where we place the text, where we place the graphics, what is the order so and so forth as well as what type of visualization or features can promote self learning. So, this is how I have 
I tried to incorporate certain things in my instructional material. So, taking this together, I have developed my content. So, now my content, I will just show the part of my content. I have developed this basically to teach concept of faithful amplification. Now, here are the questions to identify what is faithful amplification and students have given certain choices. When they click on this choice, which is a wrong choice, but they have guided for a correct answer. Then when they correct, when they go for a correct answer, they will go to the next step, then few information is given to them and then they will vary this Q point. So, when they vary Q point, when they will click in the box, they will get a waveform. This is what I say mean by multiple representation. Then all the information is given to them. They will come back and there is third category known as a design tip, where they will, it is a summary of what they have studied and this is how they will study material. Now, I am summarizing my process. So, this is how I work. You may not able to read this font. It is just a review of what I have told just right now. I have developed an instructional activity or instructional material. Then I converted it into visualization. In order to do that, I have gone through all these processes. I have decided learning objective, then identified all the instructional activities which can address this learning objective. Then I filtered these activities using cognitive science principle as well as affordance of visualization. So, filtering process is sh shown and then I developed instructional activity. So, now I have developed innovative material, I can place that this is the innovative material what I have developed and I can publish a paper, but still it is incomplete. The answer is no, I have not still established soundness of my process, why? I have developed instructional activity converted to visualization, but I have not tested my material yet. So, I cannot claim that my material is working. So, how do I know that my idea is working? What I did? I tested this material with students. What is my procedure? I divided the students into two groups, group 1 and group 2. Group 1 study visualization material which is developed by me, group 2 will study plain PPT, content is same. Both groups studied material for 40 minutes and then they solved open ended problem and wrote design script. So, this is what is my procedure. I divided them into two groups and treated them separately for the same content. Now, what are the things I should worry about? Is my content accurate and valid? So, what I did for that? I showed the content to experts from the domain, discussed with them whether it is appropriate or not and whatever changes were suggested, I made changes in the material. Then did both the groups study same content? Content for both the groups, same in topic, same in level, same in goal, only difference was in format. Then did both the groups write same test? Yes. Same question is given to both the groups. Why should I bother about all these things? My answer is, if my content differs or if my assessment in question differs, what is going to happen is, I may not able to know that what is work for the difference in the group. Is it the extra content, diagrams, features or difficulty level of assessment or my material itself. So, too many variables are changing here. And I cannot predict or I cannot even claim that my material is working. Okay. Then there is a possibility that there is inaccuracy in the content, definitely it will be a problematic issue for teachers. But similarly, why should I validate the content? Because if my content is addressing some other skill, for example, problem solving skill, not a design skill, then also my claim is false. So, that is why I validated the content and I tried to maintain all the variables in both the groups same except the treatment. Then what all, all I have to worry about? The next part is how to select students for the study. So, they are the sample or subjects for your study. Since my material is developed for second year electronic students, uh, Mumbai University students 
selected for this particular study. They divided into two groups and equivalence between the group is tested based on their previous semester's grade. Why previous semester grade? Because the same subject is taught already to them, the content belongs to the same subject, so they were tested for the previous semester grade and no significant difference was found. Then why should I bother to select the equivalence? Definitely it was already told by you people also in the chat that if one group has an excellent academic record, definitely they will overperform and that is their academic background is working and not my visualization. So, we need to establish equivalence between the group. Now, how I collected and analyzed my data? I measured data using a instrument known as rubrics. Here is a rubrics data or rubrics item for you. I have developed this instrument for measuring or assessing students design script where there is a rubric or indicator, rubric atom is nothing but an indicator what you have to look for a look for design competency in the design script of the student. Then if somebody performs very well then you have to give 3 marks, but what is the basis of it? So, criteria is given that for what you will give 3, for what you will get give 0 so and so forth. So, it is clearly defined criteria for assessing students design script. Then what I did? Rubrics are validated and reliability is tested. Why should I bother about this? Because if I do not validate, definitely if my rubric is measuring again a problem solving skill and not design, then my rubrics or my result is again I cannot claim that result because rubrics measure something else and I got the result. Similarly, why to test reliability? There is a possibility that when this the same design script is assessed by two different teachers, there should be a consistency because human is coming into picture, the instrument should be strongly reliable and as an engineer all of us know that reliability is the most important criteria when you are measuring something. Because for different different person, it should not give different different result. If teacher checks this leniently, your first group may perform and it may be the claim due to the checking of the or it is may be due to the instrument that the second group performed well. So, how did I know that which group performed better? Now, what is to be done for that? I took average scores of two groups and compared them. There are many statistical tests available which can compare the scores of the two group. They can compare mean and standard like mean or standard deviation. What I did is I did a man Whitney test to compare the two groups on design score. Last part is a result presentation. Now, group 1 design scales improved compared to group 2. There are many methods by which you can show your result. You can show in the table format, you can show in the bar graph, pie chart. I showed my result in this format that is in bar chart format. Now, next part is you have to summarize your result. Now, my results say that group 1 performed better than group 2 on these 3 scales that is specification, using specification and sequencing the step uh, process. While there is no significant difference found for the last competency, definitely should I stop here? No. Did my idea really work? I have to conclude this session why my idea is work and how it works. My idea is develop visualization to teach engineering design skill. I started with that, developing a material. Then I conducted a systematic study with the students. I just compare the results and I found this result. Then after that, I conducted post experiment interview with the student and analyze their audio scripts. When I analyze the audio script, what I found out that whatever there in the instructional material, they trigger their inquiry process and that is why group 1 work better than group 2. So, this is what is my conclusion that student who studied using visualization scored higher than student who studied using plain PPT. So, this indicates that my material worked. I have presented this paper is already presented at ICC 2012 conference. 
So, last to summarize what I did and I am just trying to compare it with the initial slides which were shown to you, what roughly look for, what your paper must contain and what was there in my research study. Novelty, novelty that is visualization to teach design skills with self learning material it was not done in the previous work. So, that is the novelty, how I position literature study on benefits and applications of visualization as well as learning theories to promote self learning. Then systematic approach to the solution for example, I identified design skill, sub competencies, generated material and tested the material. Then what are the evidences? Design script scores using rubric from the and the two groups were compared and finally, I connected my result to my idea. So, these are the references and these are the all people who helped me during this work. Thank you.